if you've you have something you can email me quickly email the best yeah okay i'm going to email you the whole thing and and what the motion will look like but we'll have to see who makes it okay Hi, Janice. How are you? I'm good. It's how are you? Way now. Good. Let me know if you've gotten it, David. Okay. Not quite. Okay, got it, Dory. Oh, cool. Good. All right, it is four o'clock. So we'll go ahead and and call our meeting to order. We've got the uh, the November meeting of the TTCDA. We'll go ahead and call it to order. And I guess as part of the governor's executive order. Um, a determination by this body needs to be made that that conducting this meeting by electronic means is necessary to protect the health, the public health, the safety and welfare of Tennesseans in light of the COVID-19 outbreak. So will one of the uh, commissioners make that motion? So moved. Thank you, Janice. Is there a second? Second. All right, Dory, if you'll call the roll on the motion. Yes, thank you. Justin Biggs. Present. David Collins. Aye. Aye. Nancy McBee. Nancy McBee. Aye. Ben Pethel. Aye. Janice Turpiny. Aye. That's five ayes unanimously. All right, motion carries. So we are going to be, uh, we are now legal to conduct this meeting electronically. Um, okay, we do have a quorum and I think um, you've got the minutes in the packet that you were sent out earlier. So if you all will uh, look at those and I'll entertain a motion for their approval when someone's ready. Make a motion to approve the minutes. Okay, thanks, Ben. So we have a second. 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 All right. Any discussion on the minutes? Okay, Dory, if you'll call the roll, please. Yes, sir. Thank you. Justin Biggs? Aye. David Collins? Aye. Aye. Nancy McBee? Nancy McBee. Aye. Ben Pethel? Aye. Janice Turpinning? Aye. Uh, 5 0 unanimous. Motion carries. Great. Motion's carried. Okay. We've got a lot of, um, of applications on our, on our agenda this month. And I believe Nancy might have to roll off the, 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 out of the meeting fairly quickly. So I want to go ahead and uh, leave the administrative review items until the end of the, uh, end of the agenda, if that's okay with uh, you, Michelle. Michelle, you're on mute. Thank you. Sorry. Is no Liz on the is Liz on the meeting to govern the rezonings? Yeah, what I'd like to do is uh, because we're running up a little bit of a of a time issue with a couple of the commissioners, I'd like to move the administrative items uh, to the end of the agenda. Okay. So yeah, here's in the office. Let me make sure she's joined on. Okay. Yeah, the, the rezoning cases are Liz's. I'm happy to go ahead and start them until she gets on the call. Um, the first one is the 11A20 TOR. This is a rezoning for 10607 Coward Mill Road located here um, to the east of Felicity Parkway. 
and just kind of for a contextual map here, it kind of shows it's sort of rural and area still at this point. It's kind of surrounded by PPTO zoning or business park and technology overlay zoning with the planned residential to the west and kind of to the south. The interesting thing about this one is TDOT has plans to extend Cherahale Boulevard and the extension is going to come through this property at some point. And Liz might have more information on that. Since Jumping she's in now, everyone. Thank you, Dory. Um, I will give her a minute to get on here. And so they're trying to remember what they were asking for. I can pull the folders really quickly. With other vitals, so we'll wait for her to, to jump on. I'm pretty sure they're asking for PR, but I don't remember the density that they're wanting. Well, all that stuff's in my work. Or I could go ahead and do the signage one really quickly if you'd rather dive into that one. Yeah, I'm just trying to trying to save us a little bit of time. Hi, sorry, my apologies. Oh, that's okay. Let me go ahead and um, read this one into the into the record, Liz. What we we're trying to do is is uh, move the administrative review items to the end of the agenda. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and start with Waterloo Construction LLC. This is item. Um, 11-A-20-TOR, this is on the northeast side of Coward Mill Road, east of Pellissippi Parkway. It's a rezoning from BP to TO, uh, excuse me, BPTO to PRTO in the sixth commission district. So if you could give us a, uh, a report on that one, please. Sure thing. Um, yeah, so this is adjacent to a new subdivision um, that's going in uh, adjacent to the Pellissippi Parkway. Um, and the adjacent parcel, larger parcel that you see immediately to the east side is where the new um, proposed elementary school um, is expected to go in. So the applicant is asking to rezone for planned residential up to five dwelling units an acre. Um, and uh, we are recommending approval of this. The chair hall extension is also expected to kind of go through this general area. I think the um, county is still trying to sort of work that out um, with the property owners and the applicant. Um, but uh, given, you know, what we're seeing with an interest in sort of more housing adjacent to school areas that are part of that parental responsibility zone. Um, and because there's existing infrastructure out here in terms of water and wastewater, um, you know, and it's in the um, adjacent to the proposed elementary school staff is supportive of up to five for this location. Okay, any questions for Liz? Okay, um, do we know if anyone has signed up? Um, Dory or Michelle? John Valiant is. Looks like we've got some raised hands. John Valiant and Ryan Hickey. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Is there anyone? Hey, John, this is Dave Collins. Are you, hey. uh, are you wanting to speak on behalf or in opposition to the. Oh, I'm on behalf of. Okay. Uh, basically, we, I mean, we've talked to uh, Jim Snowden at the engineering, and uh, I think we've got the issues worked out with regard to any potential road that may uh, cut through this property. Uh, other than that, we would just ask that uh, the uh, uh, Metropolitan Planning Commission report and their recommendations be adopted. Okay. Is there any opposition to the request um, from the public? 
Not that I'm aware of, unless Liz, you've received any. Um, not any opposition um, directed to this body. Um, it's obviously coming up before uh, planning commission at their next monthly meeting. And I know that there's been a number of, you know, community concerns that have come in um, related to that. We're not aware of anyone that's that's on this Zoom uh, meeting, right? No, I am not. Okay. Okay, commissioners have any questions for either staff or the applicant? Okay, hearing none, do we have a motion? Motion to approve. Okay, thanks, Commissioner Biggs. Got a motion to approve. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Janice. Um, any more discussion? Hey, Doris, you'll call the roll, please. Yes. Justin Biggs? Aye. David Collins? Aye. Nancy McBee? Aye. Ben Peffa? Aye. Janice Terpenny? Aye. Motion carries 5 0 unanimously. What is this? Great. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Next item this is the applicant is Land Development Solutions. This is item 11 B 20 TOR. This is on the northwest quadrant of the intersection of Hardin Valley Drive and Cherahalla Boulevard. This is also a rezoning from CATO to OBTO in the sixth commission district. And Liz, if you'll give us a staff report, please. Sure, happy to. Won't be that easy at MPC. So this is uh, adjacent to the entrance of the Pellissippi Corporate Center. Um, again, it is currently zoned um, commercial. Um, the applicant is requesting to uh, go to OBTO uh, and staff feels that uh, this is in line, um, you know, and better reflects probably the entrance to the Pellissippi Corporate Center um, more so than the commercial zoning would. So we are supportive of the OBTO zoning know, rather than the commercial zoning. Yeah. Okay, any questions for Liz? You said they just fucking came in there. Yeah, I can't. I can't. Okay. Is there any opposite, or is there anyone? Is the applicant uh, here on this item? I don't see Mr. Baxa online. Okay. But... Hear anybody? Is there any opposition to this request? Do we know of anyone that signed up in opposition? Hello. I have not seen anything in opposition. Uh, Move my mic. <laughs> Hold on. Hey, John, I think you're John Valley. I'm still I, on. I'm trying to. On. I'm also technologically impaired. Let me. All right. Now, now we show you muted, so you're okay. Um, okay. Any other questions? Uh, anyone on the land development solutions proposal okay do we have a motion we'll make a motion to approve in accordance with staff recommendations all right thank you ben do we have a second thank you justin okay dory if you will call the roll please Yes, Justin Biggs. Aye. David Collins. Aye. Nancy McBee. Nancy, is she still on here? Have we lost Nancy? I think we have lost Nancy. Okay. Well, we still have a quorum. So we're we okay. do. We do. Ben Peffel. Aye. Janice Terpenny. Aye. Motion carries for zero. Okay. I'll say unanimously because uh, she's not here. All right. Well, thank you so much. And we'll move on to the next item. This is uh, applicant is USCC Services LLC. This is item 11-C-20-TOR. 
on the southeast side of Lovell Road and west of Murdoch Drive, another rezoning from CBTO uh, to the OBTO zoning district in the sixth commission district. Liz, if you'll give us a staff report, please. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, yes, so this is the ex existing, um, I think it's the US cellular uh, soccer field at this location. Um, and the applicant is requesting to go to OB for this entire parcel. Um, it's my understanding that um, they may only want to at least initially develop the area um, closest to Cornerstone Drive and Murdoch um, initially uh, that's not built out with soccer fields currently. Um, this is privately owned, even though it does, you know, show up as a park um, on the Parks, Recreation, and Greenways plan. Uh, but these are privately owned soccer fields that I believe the county leases. Um, and staff is uh, supportive of this transition to the OB zone district uh, for this area. It's adjacent to BP zoning and PC zoning. Um, and as long as it stays within the technology overlay, even if it is developed with multifamily, this body will get a chance to review um, the development. All right, thanks, Liz. Anyone have any questions for Liz? I do. Sure. Go ahead, Mr. Biggs. Liz, just these fields are not, um, they're not maintained by Knox County Parks and Rec, correct? So that is, I don't, as far as maintenance of them, um, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm under the impression that they are leased. So, um, you know, that may mean that the county is responsible for maintaining them through the course of their lease. I wish the applicant was on here. Um, ben Mullins could give us a little bit more information about that. Um, but you know, they, they, they are privately owned. So that is all I know. Um, ben Mullins is on the call. He's got his hand raised. Oh, okay, great. Thanks. Okay. Mr. Mullins, will you join us please and give your name and address for the record? Sure. My name's uh, Ben Mullins, 550 West Main Street, Suite 500. I'm here for the applicant USCC services. Uh, and, and Liz is correct. It's under we the the top portion of the property, the top half of the property is under lease to the county uh, for the soccer fields. I'm going to have to check on, on on who is responsible for maintaining what. I think there is a split in responsibility on that, uh, Commissioner Biggs. But I'll, I can confirm that uh, for you. Um, at present, there's no plans to do anything with that lease or the uh, the soccer fields. They will remain open to the public in soccer fields. And there's also, I think, a, a walking trail and a greenway around uh, that. Uh, there's no plans in at least the, uh, the indefinite future to change that. Um, you know, the we, we do believe, though, that the uh, the OB uh, zone uh, would allow us uh, more more flexibility. Uh, for some mixed use uh, type development for the, uh, the southern portion of that property, which is why we've uh, made our application. And your intent is to rezone the entire parcel, even it, though- It, it is, I mean, if, if, if otherwise, we're really just kind of rezoning this, this bottom portion of it. So it just made sense to, uh, to do it at all at the same time. It, it seemed to flow better with the, uh, the, the sector plan maps and, and the adjacent uh, uses that kind of are all uh, at issue here with the OB zoning. Understood. Any of the commissioners have any questions for Mr. Mullins? No, sir, but I do appreciate the clarification. Thank you, Mr. Mullins. Thank you, Commissioner Biggs. Okay, I'm gonna ask, is there, uh, is there any opposition to this request um, that has signed up to, to speak at the meeting today? Okay, hearing none, um, is there a um, is there a motion? I do not have a motion, um, I, but because I expect to be working on design on this project, I'd like to recuse myself from comments or voting. All right, 
note that Commissioner Pethel is recused. So noted. Um, uh, on this item. Chairman Collins, do, do we have a, uh, do we know if Ms. McBee is back and do we have? Yes, oh, yes looks like. Is. Looks yes, like. she is. I see her. Yes, I managed to get back on. <laughs> Terrific. So, yes, we still have a quorum. So I'll, I'll motion to approve. All right. Thank you. Is there a second? I will second. Okay. I've got a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Okay, um, Doris, you'll call the roll, please. Yes. Justin Biggs? Aye. David Collins? Aye. Nancy McBee? Aye. Janice Turpenny? Aye. Motion carried 4-0. Okay. And uh, thank you, Mr. Mullins, for uh, clarifying some of our questions. Appreciate you being on. Thank you for consideration. Okay, next item, uh, Hardin Valley Nutrition. Uh, this is item 11-A-20-TOS on the south side of Hardin Valley Road, west of Schaefer Road and east of Pellissippi Parkway. This is a sign permit in the PCTO zoning district in the sixth commission district. Michelle, these are yours, right? They are. All right, you'll give us a staff report, please. Absolutely. So as the application states, this is a strip center off of Hardin Valley Road through here. This is a sign permit request for the last remaining tenant space in this center. The sign, the building sign would go in this empty space above the awning at this location. Um, they've got 20, 20 square feet to play with because the building's elevation or the business's elevation is 20 linear feet. So looking at the proposed signage, it's a combination of this round logo sign area and then the individual channel letters. They are mounted on raceways that are set six inches off from the wall so the letters will be raised off of the wall surface. They all feature black trims and returns. The faces are all white acrylic and they're internally lit with blue LED lighting. Um, the Square footage of the building sign is 18.55 square feet, so it's within that 20 foot, uh, 20 square foot allotment that they have. They do also show a door sign here, but the door signs are not regulated by this board. They go straight through Knox County, so Knox County's um, code department is handling um, the actual, the, just the door signage component of this. And looking at the tenant sign, they are the last tenant sign going into the existing yard sign. They are using uh, the same panels, the same size as everyone else's. It's an aluminum panel that's 14 inches tall by 32 inches wide. Um, the only difference between this sign and the wall sign is that the font and the logo are black on this sign and they're like a dark aqua on the building sign. So based on the application and plans as submitted, um, staff finds that the signage, both signs are in compliance with TTCDA guidelines and we recommend approval under the condition that it meets all the requirements of the Knox County Zoning Ordinance when it goes through permitting. All right, thank you, Michelle. Are there any questions uh, from commissioners, to Michelle, on this item? Okay, do we have a motion? Motion to approve per planning staff recommendations. And is there a second? Second. Second. All right, Dora, you can uh, either either Ben or Nancy, whichever one you want to pick. For second in that one, I think they right. both spoke up about the same Thank time. Thank you. I think Ben, you were just a few seconds ahead. All right. Um, all right. Very so, good. Any more discussion before we vote? Okay, Dory, if you'll call the roll, please. Yes, Justin Biggs. Aye. David Collins. Aye. Nancy McBee. Aye. Ben Pethel? Aye. Janice Turpenny? Aye. Motion carried unanimously 5-0. Okay. All right. The, well, this isn't the last item that we have, but the one, last one that, that we are going to be voting on today. Um, applicant is Urban Engineering, Inc. This is item 11-A-20-TOB, uh, southwest quadrant of intersection of Lexington Drive and Omni Lane. This is for a building permit in the CBTO zoning district in, doesn't tell me whether this is in the city or the county, but. Um, it is in maybe, the county. 
this one's in the county. Okay. Um, Michelle, if you'll give us a staff report, this is a very, um, I won't say it's a complicated request, but it, it is asking for a lot of, a lot of variances. Uh, yeah. And it's a, it's a phase development. So uh, I, I wish you luck in, in giving us a, <laughs> a, a good, uh, thoughtful description on this one. So, Thank you. Um, just to kind of give you guys a, a little bit of a context, this it's along Lexington Drive in an existing warehouse office area of the TO zone. Um, as David was saying, this is a phased expansion of an existing facility. So this is the BAM's office warehouse right now. Um, at that corner, they're proposing um, three phase buildings, phase one, phase two, and phase three to be constructed. Um, and looking at the site, how it is now, there's these two parcels. They're moving this lot line over to accommodate the detention pond here. And so this all becomes its own lot with the three phases um, all encompassed on that lot. The existing part, the parking up along this part is on the parcel with the existing building. And then the remaining parking inside this alcove will be constructed as part of phase two. And in looking into the landscaping, the existing landscaping and existing entry will remain for this building here. The new access for all of these three phases is off of Omni Lane here at this cutout. There is landscaping proposed on both sides of that entry to meet TTCA guidelines. One of the waivers that they're asking for from the landscaping is. Um, for right now, the, the way that the ordinate or the guidelines are written, the landscaping has to be planted around the perimeter of the building to distance equal to half of the area of all the building's elevations. And so they're requesting a waiver to reduce that, um, that requirement and staff, I'm uh, recommending approval of that based on the fact that the buildings are all internally facing and the area along Omni Lane that's visible is landscapes. Um, I feel like that meets the spirit of the you know, intent of that, that part of the ordinance. The other landscaping waiver they're asking for is um, for a tree to be, right now the way that the guidelines are written, one large tree has to be located within 60 feet of every parking space. And these spaces here are a little bit over um, that 60 feet. And so they're asking for a waiver to allow that to occur without that tree being here. Since this would be the only planting and it's not visible from Omni, not visible to visitors really, um, staff's recommending approval of that waiver as well. Um, regarding the plants and schedules, everything on their list is in the, the list of uh, allowed trees within the zone. And so that portion meets the zoning requirements here. This is just a little bit bigger of a shot to kind of show, you know, there's kind of a good mix of small trees, large trees and shrubbery kind of planted around the perimeter, particularly on the Omni Lane side. And moving into the elevations, um, right now the proposal is to match the existing materials. And so the existing building has that white siding with the blue doors. And so the elevations are proposing these same materials. Um, I'm recommending approval of that just so that it is a cohesive sort of consistent site. And it typically we don't like to see you know, just metal buildings and like that's up to debate for you guys. On the color scheme here showing that that blue color, I believe it's this one right here for the doors. And then um, kind of going into the waivers and I'll probably go back and forth between the site plan and, and the waiver list, but there's two standards regarding building intensity that they're requesting um, waivers from. The first is for the ground area coverage and the second is for the floor area ratio. Both of these, they're asking for 40% as opposed to the 25% requirement or maximum allowed for the ground area coverage and the 30% maximum that's allowed for the floor area ratio. And um, going back to the site plan. Okay, so um, just due to the fact that, again, the buildings are all internally focused and um, not completely visible from Omni Lane, pair that with the fact that the detention pond couldn't be included in the calculations because technically it's owned by a separate party. However, it still functions as part of the site and on the ground, it still feels like part of the site. So if you could incorporate that land area with it, they wouldn't need a waiver at all for phase one. Um, they would need a slight waiver for phase two I've not got the numbers on the staff report. So for phase one, 
um, I'm, I stand corrected, sorry, they would need a ground area coverage requirement uh, waiver from that maximum to 32.5%. And then again, for per area ratio. So that would decrease the amount of um, area that they were looking for. And then for phase two, kind of the same thing. It's reducing it to 32.5% or raising it to 32.5%. And then for phase three, it's raising it to 39.7. And that's actually what they're requesting. It's actually less than that if you um, incorporate the, the detention pond. And so that's those waivers. And then this regarding the setbacks. So this side setback here, back up. sorry for all the back and forth. This setback here, they're asking for a reduction to allow an eight foot reduction in the setbacks or to a 12 foot reduction to allow an eight foot setback. Again, because this is owned by a separate party, it's not part of the site, but it feels like part of the site. That paired with the fact that there wouldn't be a building here that would be too close to this one. We're recommending approval of that just because of, of how that, that, that particular relationship here and the function of this particular parcel. So we're recommending approval of that waiver as well. And then regarding the parking, so there have, they have uh, waivers requested for phases one, two, and three. This is one of the only site plans I've actually seen where TTCBA's requirement is higher than Knox County. It's typically the other way around. So Knox County's ordinance requirements, the, they are well within um, I think it was one space per thousand. Let me look this up because I'm trying to remember what it was. So there's currently 40, 40 employees on the two largest shifts. And then once they, um, once phase three is complete, they would have 54 employees. Knox County's um, parking requirements is based on the number of employees, plus they have one visitor space. So the facility would provide 51 spaces total which is which is within Knox County's requirements, but it's well above the 101 spaces that TTCDA would require. I'm recommending approval of this one as well, just because the parking wouldn't be utilized because there's not enough employees there, and that would prevent that condition where there's a sea of parking that's unutilized. It's a little bit unsightly. It's a waste of land. It increases the impervious surface. Um, and so for that reason, I'm recommending approval of the parking setbacks um, as well. And I believe I've covered everything, but I'm happy to entertain any questions. Also, we have Marcus Shady, who is the architect on the project. We also have, let's see, make sure who all is on here. Chris Sharp with Urban Engineering is on, and they can answer any questions you guys might have that are a little more detail-oriented regarding the site. Okay, thank you, Michelle. Um, any questions from commissioners to Michelle first before I ask the uh, applicants? join us. Okay. Um, either Mr. Chady or Mr. Sharp, either one of you all care to make a comment about uh, the project or uh, anything that Michelle's pointed out to us? Can you hear me, sir? Yes. Um, Chris Sharp, Urban Engineering, 11852, Kingston Pike. Um, I think Michelle very adequately described the, the project. It is somewhat complex. Um, but I think, yeah, I think she did a good job of describing it. Yeah, I, I did have, I did have a couple of questions. Uh, the detention pond uh, that's on our on our drawing. I guess that's to the to the west of the development. I'm not sure orientation wise yeah. which way we're going. That's correct. The, does um, the the properties that we're dealing with here in this application do they is part of their detention handled by that pond? Yes, sir. And does that pond handle detention for any other surrounding sites? I believe that's the case, sir. It's kind of like a kind of a uh, shared pond. A shared pond. Okay. So the odds that that would be developed into something else other than that pond are, are 
It's very unlikely. Very, very unlikely. Okay, because I know that a lot of the the justification that Michelle's given for wanting to for being okay with with some of the variances relies very heavily on the fact that if you include the area of the of the detention pond into the overall mix, then it makes the percentages uh, a lot more palatable. I was going to have a hard time supporting some of this without that understanding. Yes, sir. Um, so. Um, Okay. Anyone else have any questions for Mr. Sharp? I, I forgot to mention too that there are the required easements, access easements for the detention pond that are shown on the plat that's being recorded. Um, it's not shown on the site plan, but it is part of the class, so they will be there. Okay. And I, sir, I would like to add, if I may, um, in our initial letter, I, I, I really I stress that uh, the facility was manufacturing and, and where you know warehouse space, which was incorrect. Uh, the bulk, the bulk of the floor area is manufacturing specific. I mean they don't, they have very little warehousing for what that's mm -hmm. worth. In my understanding is they they manufacture kind of high tech sort of material, right? That's correct. Yes, sir. Yeah, I think that that's another. I mean, for me, you know, that's this is you know, why the, the technology corridor was set up was to encourage uh, growth and expansion of, of tech type of, of industries. And we don't get enough of that uh, on the corridor. So uh, my notion is to is to try to help, you know, the expansion of that kind of business in, in the corridor where we can. So. Chairman Collins, so they're basically they're saying they're uh, there's no really infrastructure issues that's going to affect any of the surrounding area, but they are bringing uh, more jobs in the credentials that we would like to kind of the direction we want to go. Correct. Correct. Um, you know, being a warehousing and manufacturing facility, I don't know that. You know, when you look at the number of new employees per square foot, it's not that great, but it's still a growth of a of a of a tech based business in the corridor, which is which is is great. So, with that being said, I'd like to make a motion to approve per planning staff recommendation. So, Commissioner Biggs, that would include approving all the variances as well. Correct. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll be on record saying that as well. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think it's important that we get the get the variances in there as well. Okay, we've got a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. All right. Thanks, Mr. Pethel. Okay. Um, before I ask for the vote, uh, is there any anyone in opposition? While we're still in the discussion phase here, anyone in opposition uh, to this request that's signed up to? to participate with us. Okay, any other discussion by commissioners? Okay, hearing none, Dory, will you call the roll, please? Yes. Justin Biggs? Aye. David Collins? Aye. I believe Commissioner McBee needed to leave. Uh, ben Pethel? Aye. Janice Turpenny? Aye. Motion carries 4-0 uh, unanimously. Thank okay, you. great. Thank you, Mr. Sharp, for, for joining us and helping clarify a couple of things for us. Okay. Michelle, let's go back now to the... Uh, to the Chairman Collins. Uh, yes, Commissioner Biggs. Um, I've got to, I've got to leave as well. Uh, commission meeting starts in 20 minutes. Um, if I leave, is there still a quorum? Uh, yes. Well, uh, Dory, do yes. we still have a quorum? Yeah. Okay. I, Justin, I don't think we have anything that we have to vote on for the rest of the agenda. So I think we're okay. okay I just um, want to make sure. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Um, okay, so Michelle, if you'll go through the, uh, well, I'll, I'll read them off by individually, so that's the way we normally do it. So the first item is uh, Applicants Ball Homes, LLC. This is a, uh, item 11-A-20-TOA, 
again, this is administrative review by staff. It's on the east side of Solway Road across from Sam Lee Road, uh, building permit in the OBTA zoning district and the sixth commission district. So Michelle, if you'll talk us through that one, please. Absolutely. So you guys probably remember this development plan came through fairly recently and, and a, approval from you all in July of 2020. Those plans were approved under the condition that a lighting plan be submitted for administrative approval by staff at a future date and these are those plans. So just as a quick refresher, all of the buildings that are on this portion of the site are phase two and all of these are phase one. Um, from Solway Boulevard or Solway Road, sorry, there is a boulevard coming through here. This is an internal road that leads to both phases of development. And so um, the TTCDA guidelines don't have any, rec any uh, requirements for there to be site lighting along this road. So there's, we recommended for some to be located here, but there's none um, provided. And because there's not a requirement to, we went ahead and approved it. There is a greenway going along Solway Road and the AYSO soccer fields are um, around in this area about three parcels over. So with those two conditions in mind, it's, it's feasible that pedestrians would be walking along this interior road and there's no sidewalks. And we felt like to increase safety lighting would be warranted. But um, again, we could not require it because it's not in the guidelines to be able to do so. So what they have provided is um, building lighting along all of the apartment buildings. So these are the apartment buildings here and the clubhouse. And um, there's also parking along the covered parking. And then there is a single light pole that you can really tell it's a blue dot right there that designates the singular light pole on the site. And that is to the garbage dumpster area. And so I'm looking a little bit closer at the photo metrics. These are all sort of your typical standards. They are underneath the foot candle requirements or the maximum foot candle allowance and the TTCDA guidelines. And so um, that's the case for the building lights, the garage lights and the light pole. Um, the light pole is gonna be a dark finish um, also in accordance with that. All the fixtures are full cut off. And so they are all in compliance with TTCDA guidelines. And so bearing all of that in mind, I approved the COA just a couple of weeks ago, or maybe last week. Okay, any questions for Michelle on this one? Again, uh, on these administrative reviews, um, staff has the, uh, the authority to uh, prove certain things. And so uh, Michelle's given us an update on the things, the, the items that, that staff has approved administratively. We don't vote on them, uh, but we do make it a, a policy to uh, inform commissioners of, of the actions that staff's taken. So. Yeah, and these are pretty much the same lighting plans that were included in that original proposal that you all saw back in um, in July, but we had recommended again for the interior roadway and that they took some time to investigate that. And they also looked at um, some security lighting along the backs of the buildings, but because the foot handle requirement is so low, they felt like it wouldn't really add a lot of um, security. And so that's the reason they left those off, so. Anyway. Okay. Our next item, the applicant is Daniel Scott Cooter, uh, item 11-B-20-TOA. Uh, this is on the east side of Solway Road across from Sam Lee Road, a building permit in the OBTO zoning district in the 6th Commission District. So Michelle, if you'll tell us what you did Absolutely. there. So they're making just a few renovations to this building at the rear of the site. It's a, an office complex here and they're just making very few altercations. Um, so the building was built in 1982. So it came before the TTCDA guidelines. It was not um, approved or subject to such an approval at the time that it was built, but they are um, required to go through TTCDA to make these modifications. And so what they're wanting to do is um, enclose one of the windows and it's on each floor, it's located approximately right here. You can see it overlooking the ramp and they're wanting to replace a single window with a louver and a vented louver. And so um, the, the window is four feet, 10 inches tall and three feet, nine inches wide. And that's the same size as the louver. So we'll infill the entire space of that window opening. That's once the window is removed, there wouldn't be any filler material or anything like that. They do have three colors selected and they were getting physical samples made that will take those out to the site and choose the one that closely 
matches or most closely matches the existing um, storefront system that's installed right now currently. So there's three colors on the um, in the staff report and all three are approved just based on whichever one is the best match. And the um, all of the vent material, the specs and everything was included in your packets. Um, the second thing that they are doing is replacing, removing and installing different mechanical units up on the roof. And because these are located um, so high up off of the ground and in, on the back, there's a second level roofing. This roof right here is located lower down. And so for that reason, people that are on the sidewalk really can't see the mechanical units, therefore no screening or, or anything like that would be required. And since they meet the guidelines for both the vented louver and the roof equipment, I approved the COA based on that fact. I don't know if anyone had any questions about this one. Okay. All right. Then the last item is TNT Signs Inc. This is item 11 C 20 TOA on the northwest side of Hardin Valley Road, northeast side of Performing Arts Way. This is a sign permit in the PCTO zoning district in the 6th Commission District. This is a sign um, for that Sherwin Williams that's infill located right here in, in this part of the shopping center. And you all recently approved this yard sign here to be located 10 feet from the right of way. However, there were utility lines underway, so they've had to move it back five feet closer to the parking. So now it is located 15 feet from the right of way. Um, as part of that initial approval um, issued in August of 2020, you guys had approved a waiver allowing them a 10 feet deviation um, from that 20 foot requirement and they were located 10 feet from the right away. So this, this still falls within that waiver that you all had approved. They were only moving it five feet back. It doesn't interfere at all with the approved landscaping plans. It clears it from utilities and it's not um, preventing any, any line of sight for drivers. So with that in mind, and since it met the TTCDA guidelines, I um, issued the COA for this. All right, seems very reasonable to me. Any questions uh, from commissioners for Michelle on this item? All right. Well, thanks for taking care of those three things so that so we didn't have to. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Okay, I think we do have one other uh, item to talk about um, on our Door, will you help us with this one? I think uh, on our yes, on, uh, on our uh, our schedule that we approved. Um, uh, looking at it, we realized that we uh, selected July fifth, um, which is that Monday, uh, before the commission meeting as usual. But uh, upon further review, I uh, realized that's the national observance of July fourth because July fourth is on a Sunday. Michelle, I want to go ahead and come in. I just, we just wanted to put that. I approached Michelle when I caught that. I'm like, oh my goodness. Okay, you know, so currently our our approved schedule shows that we're supposed to meet on July the 5th of 2021 for our July meeting, right? Yeah, Correct. when you Google national holidays for 2021, um, uh, which I apologize, we should have clearly done beforehand, but they, uh, um, uh, it shows that Monday is that observance. So there'll be a bunch of things closed. Right. Okay. Well, we need to move off of that then. Um, I guess what we typically do then would go to the, go to Tuesday the 6th. Yes. That's what we've done this year. Have we not, Michelle? We've just gone to the Tuesday? That's correct. Okay. Yeah, I think we did that. So, um, You know, I guess my question is, do we still have a quorum? Can't... We should. Not so far ahead that it's a regular meeting for me, but I'm sure I can reschedule it. Okay. Yeah, I don't have a, I'm not sure exactly what I've got going on that far ahead. <laughs> we still okay. have three members, so we do still have a quorum. We still have the quorum, okay, great. Okay, well, um, Ben, are you 
you okay with uh, Tuesday, July 6th for our, our meeting in July? I'm okay with that. I do potentially have plans to be out of town. Yeah. Well, if we end up running into a problem, I mean, you know, we'll we'll know a month ahead of time or so, and, and then we can we can look at rescheduling that if we need to. That happens sometimes. Occasionally, we'll have um, we won't be able to get a quorum with with commissioners, and, and we have to reschedule things. So, um, well, do, uh, top of that on our end. Yeah. So, um, will one of you two, Janice or, or Ben, we all make a motion that we. Uh, as of now, schedule the uh, the July 2021 meeting to uh, for July the sixth. Um, I'll move that we schedule our July 2021 meeting to July the sixth. All right. No second. Got a second. Okay, Dory, if you'll call roll, and we'll make that official. Yes. Thank you, David Collins. Aye. Ben Petal. Aye. Janice Turpany. Aye. Thank you. Motion carries unanimously 3-0. All right. Uh, if you guys will make that change, that'll be great. And then, like I said, we'll we'll probably know in June what vacation plans for everyone are and we'll see if we need to do anything else with that. So Yeah, we'll, we'll oh. announce location and all that as well. We haven't gotten confirmation from PBA yet anyway. So I'll reach okay. out to her tomorrow, Michelle. Okay. Okay. Just out of curiosity, uh, Michelle Dory, um, any thoughts from you all, or any uh, anything from the county side on meeting back in person again anytime soon, or are we still looking at probably doing uh, remote meetings for a little bit longer? I'm happy to answer that, Michelle. I, just being involved in all the meetings in one capacity or another, it's my understanding that we are going to um, our current goal is to conduct the planning commission meeting in person. Um, that's probably dependent on whether or not they can get the, the glass, or the fiberglass panels installed, the fiberglass, not plexiglass, I'm sorry, panels installed, um, but would likely do all the other meetings uh, virtually through December. Um, but that's, that's, none of that is set in stone as we know, because things change every other five minutes. Um, but <laughs> yeah. Um, We'll be here either sitting here in front of our computers or downstairs, but I, I, is that your understanding, Michelle, that we would do all the other meetings virtually and just try and uh, we have the opportunity to perhaps have not quite such a big meeting in December. Um, ben, I see you still on there. Don't hold me to that. Um, but I, I think we might have a, a smaller meeting. It might be a good opportunity to try it anyway, but we'll see. That's the executive committee's current um, plan. But uh, we encourage everyone to, of course, check back with us because we don't know. Okay. Well, just curious as to whether anyone had had anything definitive for the for the end of the year. We only have, you know, I mean, next next month at our last meeting of the year. But um, you know, we'll play this by ear like everyone else does on COVID, and you know, at the appropriate time, we'll meet in person again because I do think that's a, a better venue to meet. This works fine for what we do, but um, I like when we meet as a a body in person better personally so I'll try to get there sooner rather than later yeah i think since i've joined we've not ever had an in-person meeting actually i'm not even sure i'll have to look back at where is the meeting <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah i guess we'll still meet in the small assembly right I would think that so, unless it's booked already um i think there were a couple of issues with that dory right it, were, yeah, we, I think I, it's to be cleaning or something like that. I spoke with uh, uh, Sunny today, PBA, um, who does all the scheduling um, for all the meetings in those two rooms for the year. And uh, there's a couple glitches and because we have so many meetings that we use both main and small assembly for, but um, we'll work through them. We'll work yeah. through them. We'll find, you know, other, we've had meet in room 545 before. Uh, 545. Yeah, we've met, yeah, in the city county building. Yeah, a couple we of times. Have, um, we might have like 461, which is a really, really great, you know, plug and play large room. So that might be an option as well. So uh, we'll figure it out. It's, usually, it's a little later than usual this year because um, getting that confirmation because of all the COVID changes yeah. and all the stuff going on with the courts and such that it's just been a little bit crazy for PDA. Okay, well, 
Um, appreciate everyone's uh, diligence of what we're doing. This is a, a, a fairly large agenda for us. Um, and maybe we'll, I'm not sure, what, Michelle, how are we looking for next month in December? Do we have many applications yet? Um, next month, I believe we only have one application. Um, so it'll be short. It'll be short and sweet. So, okay. All right. Well, I appreciate everyone's participation and um, we'll see you uh, next month and we are adjourned. Thanks. We'll see you guys next month, everyone. Thank you. Have a